Hello and welcome back to Green Lady Permaculture. My name is Sarah and I have a permaculture garden, animal setup, including rabbits, chickens, Muscovy ducks, um, all in town uh, on about a fifth of an acre. And I'm in zone 6B in Central Oregon where we have an 80 day grow season. Um, we try and grow things in a permaculture style because otherwise we wouldn't have the space to really, you know, doing a monoculture, you kind of have to have space if you want to grow multiple things right next to each other. And I could do the whole rose thing and I could do all of that if I really wanted to, but I'm not that organized. Um, basically my channel is ADHD for permaculturists. <laughs> um, I do a lot of things here to work with my zones and my climate and work with what I have, even though our system here is really different with only at that 80 day grow season and the zone of six. Um, so mostly I do animals, but today we're talking about garlic. Now, the reason I grow garlic is, well, for one, we love it. We eat a ton of it. So every year we grow garlic. Um, I think we started off with music and Roja garlics. Um, and those are hard neck garlics um, because of our zone and our climate. I don't do soft neck garlics unless I decide I want to put some in, then I'll put them in in the spring, but I don't overwinter them here. Um, they tend to just rot. So, um, what I'm going to do today is a post of mine got shared a couple of times in some just edible gardening groups. And I got a lot of questions about why I am post or why I'm planting garlic around my fruit trees. Now that's because of companion planting. Companion planting is really, really useful. Um, you can deter, deter bugs with them. Um, so I put them around my fruit trees because right when garlic is coming up, is right around the time my fruit trees are starting to uh, leaf out and bloom. And you really don't want to get aphids and those early uh, pests that tend to come in before their predator pests, like ladybugs. They tend to not come till later here. Um, and I don't like buying them. That's a whole nother story. But most of those ladybugs you're buying in those bags in the store are wild caught. They're just somebody went out into their natural habitat, grabbed them, and they're basically selling them to you. They're not bred for it. So that's, you know, that's, that's a debate in and of itself. Um, but garlic will help deter the aphids and help the ladybugs and other um, good uh, insects can come in. So we're going to plant some around a tree, a couple of trees in the back. I have some plums. I'm also going to plant them in the ground um, where I have kale right now because I'm noticing my kale does have a little bit of an aphid infestation. It won't really do much now and I know that but I'm going to try and keep my kale going um, throughout the year. So I'm going to see if it works. It's just a test on that. Um, but I'll do it a couple other places as well, just where places I know that I have to worry about bugs. So I've got this big old jar. Now when you're planting garlic, you want to make sure you're choosing the largest cloves. I mean, if you're just buying garlic for the first year and you just got your pack of garlic, your seed garlic, just plant what you have. Maybe try a couple of them to make sure you like the variety. Um, Cause it's not the variety in the store. So these, like here's the red. I don't know if I can get that to show, but here's the, it's like Roja garlic. And this is like the music garlic. So I've got those and they've done really well. And so I just take the largest bulbs. And as you can see, these bulbs are big. Um, I take the look. Yes. Hi, baby. Are you going to be a butt? Hi, what are you doing? We're talking about garlic. You want to smell some garlic? No? Okay. Anyway, sorry about that. And the reason I'm in here is because the light out there is crazy this morning. And I'm trying to do this before work. <laughs> so, 
Are you gonna play it? Oh. Sorry about that. Everybody's out jogging. It's early morning. Um, so Merlin likes to bark at the joggers. <laughs> um, I like to bark at the joggers too. I'm not a jogger. Anyway, so we're going to plant the garlic around some of our fruit trees and in areas that we know need it. So I'm going to show you guys that now. Basically to, okay, I should do this. Basically to plant the garlic, you want to plant the garlic in the ground. Some people say that you should plant them 30 days before your last frost date. I never do. I always do it like the first week of October and my last frost date is September 15th. So as long as you're not getting like, as long as you're getting warm enough days, it's fine. Um, it's here. We just get freezing cold nights. So as long as your days are warm enough and you have a big enough swing, you can definitely plant it after your last frost date. I do it all the time, um, every year. So let's see. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So about companion planting with garlic, you don't want to plant garlic. I did this last year. I totally messed up. See so if I can find the picture. And if I can, I'll post it up here. Um, grown with uh, asparagus or next to asparagus, grown as companion plants with other plants. Big difference. Anyway. Garlic and asparagus don't like each other. So if you plant garlic next to asparagus, you're gonna get tiny, tiny little garlic bulbs. Just, mm -mm. there was like four clothes on them and they were like itty bitty. Um, they were flavorful and very yummy, but they were tiny little garlic like nubbins. So um, be definitely look up what you're gonna plant it next to. I like to plant it next to kale and leafy greens and fruit trees. So, so now we're back out in the garden and I'm gonna show you my green gauge plum. We just put it in this year from a stick and it's doing pretty good. So, so pretty decent. I'm really looking forward to this guy coming up here. This is a little shadier of a spot, so we're gonna see how it does. So this is some garlic and stuff. Uh, it wasn't garlic, this was a leek that um, never really got really great. So I just threw it on the ground here, a couple of them as well, um, just to keep bugs away from it. Cause I noticed we had some um, bugs going on. So, so basically, all right. We've got two little tools here. Normally a Hori Hori would be the best. Um, and a Hori Hori is basically this, um, but it's just long, but I can't find mine because that's just the way it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out about a foot from the base of this tree. Now, depending on the width of the tree is about how far you want to go out. I usually like if it's an inch, it's a foot, two inches, two feet, you know, that kind of thing. But there's a lot of rock over here because I have liver rock over here. So hold on. That's why I want to use the shovel over here anyway. There's so much river rock over here. Now why I'm putting the stones around over here is because those will help heat the tree during the winter. And I knew there was a lot of rock here, but I didn't realize how much. We had so much river rock around the house when we first moved in. It was like the entire property was ringed in tons and tons of river rock. Uh, so we kind of piled it in some areas where we didn't think it would be a problem. Oh, nice. Look at that. Now, I'm digging this more than I really want to because of the rocks, but that mycelium, that's amazing. So I'm gonna stick that right there. Let that continue. Even more mycelium. Now this is basically the communication network of your garden. This stuff is great, so you wanna keep it. I'm just going to put it over there under some stuff to spread it around. All right. Now there's a lot of rock in here, but garlic is great about that. It's okay with a little rock. As long as it's got a little bit of space 
to move around. It's just a bulb. Some people say you have to grow it without any rock. I say that's fooey. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. And I'm going to do this. This is just a chunk of bedding from the rabbits. Now you could just put compost on this. No problem. Compost is great. I'm just a real regular amount of dirt. And yes, there's a lot of bark in here. That's okay. Right there. I'm going to do that. Cover this up. And this is basically what I've been having to do with all of my soil. This area over here is a horrible spot. But the tree and this garlic is going to change that. foot over here. And again, about a foot out. I mean, yeah, that's like very roundabout. More rock. All this river rock. And yes, I totally dug way deeper than the river rock when I put this tree in. Now, this side of the garden freezes pretty solid in the winter. I'm sorry, and this is why I don't like digging, but it needs to happen over here because the soil is just poop. But there, now we have a nice good hole there. there. Now, trick with garlic is you don't want to remove the skin. The skin is what keeps it from rotting as uh, quickly or as bad. If you remove the skin on this, it's going to rot away. Especially in bad conditioned soil like this. So, get another chunk of the bunny. And get a little dirt on top of that first. But that's the nice thing about the bunny fertilizers. It can go right and touch the plant and it's not even a problem so there we have three in the ground already i think i think that's good for this tree for right now because these are going to grow up let's see <clears throat> i think that's really good for this spot right here we have the one here the one here and the one here um this is a north facing fence here so i don't get a ton of sun right here um, this tree is meant to be kind of the edge of the property, um, area, as you can see. Um, but having this here south side of the tree is going to do really good. I hope, because I've never planted garlic this far out over here, but we'll check that. Now we're going to go plant garlic in a bed. Um, we're going to move the leeks over here too. Got this. Now, the reason we do this over here, I'm going to show you. My kale is infested. It's gross. But you know what? The, um, the chickens don't care. They actually like it. So what I'm going to do, though, And I'll come out here tonight and move that. But I'm going to plant some of the garlic in here. So I have to get the garlic to do that, though. Moving the supplies. I 
So we got a bunch of the rabbit bedding over here, which is what we're going to be using to planting. Just taking handfuls and putting it over here. Oh look, there's a golden beet. <laughs> That was one of the ones that I left in the ground because it wasn't quite big enough yet. There's probably a few more in here. Anyway, do something with that. All right, so there's a lot of San Juan in here. Let me get this San Juan out. Where did the stick come from? I don't even know. So this is San Juan. I'll just give that to the rabbits. Now this soil is a lot better over here. Oh, that was a little beat. So. Pulled a little bit of beets here. I got these beets out of this little area here. And then normally I would just take a hori hori and do this, but because I can't find my hori, I'm gonna just do that. This is the way you would use the hori. You just put it in. You see, and this is about four inches deep where the bottom of the garlic is. So I'm going to do that. There we go. Got that. Now this is what you would kind of do with compost. Just consider my bunny bedding compost and mulch all in one. So you would put the compost down if you're gonna do it. And then you would put mulch. Sorry, hitting things. So we've got some garlic right here next to this Juliet cherry, right next to my infected kale. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll probably, we'll see what happens with this kale. I'm. I'm probably just gonna rip it out and give it to the ducks and chickens. I've got a bunch growing in the greenhouse right now, so I'm not overly worried. So, I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But it hasn't affected anything else except for the kale. And I think the kale was just a little too close. So, we'll see how that goes, but um, I like the idea of putting the garlic over here for now, just in case this spot ends up being a problem. So putting the, the garlic here will hopefully remove any of the stuff from around this area come spring. I'm going to plant it around in a bunch of different little nooks and crannies like I just did here. And like I did over in the front yard yesterday. And many, many more places around the garden. So you guys have a great day and I will yak at you later. Bye.